Hey, the rulers, Demo73 here, bringing you the deck profile for Chronopon's Eins. Who needs story about stones when all of your cards are void? Who likes to just throw out big boards of stuff? This is the deck for you. This is a first take on Eins, so there's a lot to evolve, but let's go ahead and jump right in. This session brought to you by Odyssey Games for pre orders and sealed product, CCG Prime for tons of singles and supplies, Cardo Doco for international rulers looking for product, and FoulLibrary.com for articles and wonderful deck lists. It's also brought to you by our guest lecturer patrons, Vite Ramen. Class is in session. So here's the deck profile for Chronopons Eins, making use of Chronopons rather than Dragon of Solari. Uh, it's a very good introduction to Eins, I think. Um, but I do think if you're trying to go more competitively, you're probably going to steer away from Chronopons and towards Dragon of Solari, just because there are a few little uh, niche interactions that actually make it pretty dang great. Um, so first off, we're playing the Ruler Eins. Obviously, his whole gimmick is that we're revealing gears from the sideboard to gain those abilities once per turn. So we're actually playing two copies each of Squirrel, Shark, Bird, and Bat. The reason why we're playing two each is the first time you flip over your Flight of the Demon Sword is probably going to go ahead and like have, you know, the four things come into the field. Um, and so we want more to be able to reveal if your Leibitz and Chrono Gear gets killed. Um, so that's why we're playing two copies of each. In terms of reveal order, I usually reveal Shark first because it's a free extra card, then Bird next because it gets the flying, which is really good for like applying pressure. Uh, and then from there, it's based on what I have in hand. If I have quick cast cards, I'll do Squirrel. If I have mastery cards, I'll do Bat because it is at the very beginning of the turn before you even draw for turn that Eins will uh, trigger to reveal that. And we're also playing one copy of Gearification Facility of Solaris and Outer Space so that you can pick your edition at the beginning of the game based on which kind of deck you're playing against. Stone base wise, we're playing 10 copies of Satellite Crystal. That's because we want Rain of Comets to get big very quickly. Uh, and we also want Attack Trooper to be good. And we also want um, it to be pretty much always available to be able to play uh, Flight of the Demon Sword um, because it has to be paid off of the gears. So, main deck guys, we're playing four copies of Flight of the Demon Sword as much as possible. You can play less. I mean, the deck can still apply a good amount of pressure without it if you're still trying to find those Eins contracts. Um, but obviously, optimally, you're going to play four of it. Four copies of Prototype Magic Trooper because it's a free card that sets up Chrono Pawns really nicely. You can like pay Mag Prototype Magic Trooper for what for free, and then immediately tap it to play Chrono Pawns, um, which is really really nice to keep up a will for interaction. Three copies of Attack Trooper because this guy gets very, very big, uh, is able to do a lot of damage very, very quickly um, because it's every gears you control and revealed outside the game. So stones, revealed gears itself, the you get a lot of pressure out of it. And this is one of the cards that Dragon of Solari kind of helps make even better in the fact that not only are you going to kill something, but then it can immediately swing in rather than being just a tempo play. Copies of three wise men were playing two. I'd bump this up if I was playing the Dragon of Solari version because then they'd be able to immediately like come into play and tap to produce three more void. Uh, they draw you a card, they recover Eins for those mastery abilities, which is kind of the pinnacle of what Eins is wanting to do um, because they're so good. So many different ways for him to be able to tap and get those additional effects. Two copies of Gearification Facility for pretty much the same reason. We want to be able to untap uh, Eins multiple times a turn. It really helps you play through some good pressure. Uh, Light of Solaris for card draw and making your board bigger, as well as, again, it's a card that you can play off of Eins, which is really, really good. And then the biggest, best card of the deck, in my opinion, is Rate of Comments. This card is absolutely insane. Um, you do so much damage with it, and even if you don't do damage, you remove those abilities, and that, is to me, is the biggest piece. This kills whole boards of things with Eternal. This kills whole boards of things with Swiftness. The, like, this kills Never End just by itself. Like, it's so easy to make this card just have so much pressure. Um, that I'd certainly want to play this card, for sure. Three copies of Lorite, just because we want to have the ability to be able to cancel stuff, and we can filter into it very easily with Gearification Facility, but we don't want too many copies, just in case, you know, Gearification Facility gets killed. Six Chronopons. I mean, it's a good card, but playing eight copies of it just seems a little bit too much, so I'm settled on the middle ground of six as opposed to four. Three copies of Typhon's Asteroid Cluster. This card is very versatile, gives you a lot of different options, as well as, um makes it very easy to get to seven gears for the sake of Flight of the Christ a Demon Sword. Three copies of Gearification for even more draw power and getting more of those gears revealed, especially like immediately after a flip, which is nice. And three copies of Satellite Shield. Um, if I was to change this deck, Satellite Shield and Chrono Pons would get cut. I'd probably add in like some fairer spells, um, more three wise men, and then I'd play things like Horn to be able to recycle um, my contracts or things like um, Reign of Comets or things like that. Or even... Um, 
you could consider playing um, Spinning Aqua Soul. Uh, would be a card that you could consider uh, because we can filter it for one and that can help you buy back uh, Reina Comets, which is, again, an insane card. So that is the deck. Let me know how you guys have been playing Ainz. Very curious to see those lists, especially Chronopon variants versus Dragon of Solari variants. And until next time, this is TMO73 saying, Last Dismissed.